particular segment, uh, I want to call our attention to Mr. Oliver Slope. He's with Blue Line Futures. He's located in Chicago, and we'll talk about this travesty in the grain markets today. My goodness, uh, Oliver, it's just been uh, a train wreck over here. Let's take a look at the corn market first with our quotes provided by Bar Chart. Uh, things started out heading downhill and quickly went worse, uh, but now they're trying to regroup just a little bit here. So we have March corn currently eight and a half lower at 667 and three quarters. It has gained back about four and a half cents from its earlier low of the day. Uh, December corn, the new crop month at 588, would still be down seven and three quarters cents here on the day at this point. Now in the soybeans, the March contract, after getting as low as 1479 and three quarters, now we're back up to 1491. That's a relative term, back up to 1491. So we have gained back basically about 11 cents, but we're still 15 and a half cents lower than where we actually closed last Friday way under $15 now. On the November new crop soybeans, we're currently down 11 and three quarter cents, and now we're at 1340 and a quarter per bushel. Now let's switch over to the Chicago wheat. It uh, started out under pressure, but boy, when the soybeans hit the skids, the wheat just completely fell out of bed, and March Chicago wheat down 19 and three quarters now at 721 and three quarters. And again, it's about a nickel off of its earlier low this morning. Same story in Kansas City. Wow, there, last time we checked, it was down like 30 some cents. We have March now down 26. We're at 822 per bushel, and that's six cents off of its earlier low this morning. Had a high last night of 844 and a half. In Minneapolis, spring wheat, March down 16 and a half at 896 and a quarter. In the cotton trade, that was one of the only bright spots in the ag commodities. Uh, we have the March cotton 76 points higher at 8746 and December 58 points higher. Well, Oliver, the uh, grain markets overall just really, really in the red here today to start things out on a trading week, a full trading week, I might add. But do you look at this as more fundamentally driven or more technically driven with all the selling that we're seeing here today? Well, I think it started off as fundamental selling and turned into technical selling once we got the floor open. There are three major headlines to start the Sunday night trade. And that was better weather in Argentina, better than expected crop tour results from Ag Resource in Brazil. And then we've got the Chinese Lunar New Year this week as well. So that might limit some of the business that China gets done. So those headwinds, I think, opened the market lower. And then we got the 830 open and it was a rush to sell everything. We've seen funds uh, add to their net long position last week, according to the recent commitment of traders report. And I think today you're seeing the long liquidation. The 100 day moving average for that March corn contract comes in near 675. We broke below there. And that's when you started to see the selling accelerate. Now, I do think that we probably could see a little bit more weakness in this market in the near term. But I think eventually we'll, we'll find an equilibrium and be able to stabilize and maybe start to settle into a little bit of a trading range as we go forward. I think a lot of attention is going to be on South America, but we're getting to that point already where we're going to be talking about weather in the United States. And last week's drought monitor showed uh, signs of easing in the eastern corn belt. So that's going to be something to keep a close eye on too going forward. So what do you look for when it comes to the wheat? I mean, the bottom has fallen out of this wheat market here, and a lot of folks were looking for support to come in here before too long. Yeah, the, the wheat market, we've been writing in our daily commentary that we see equal risk to the upside and downside, which puts our bias right at neutral. If we get a little bit more oversold and see that March Chicago wheat contract test $7, there might be a buying opportunity. But it's one of those things where you just don't really want to be a hero and try to catch a falling knife. I think the risk to the upside right now is the fact that the funds are as short as they've been in three years in Chicago wheat. And so if we do get a, a bullish catalyst and do find some technical support, you have the risk of short covering, which could rally this market. Okay.